On behalf of Lakes Gas, today we're going to go through the proper safety procedures for filling portable DOT cylinders. First and foremost is the safety of the employee and those around you. Make sure that in the dock facility that only trained employees are in the area while dispensing liquid propane. You must have the proper safety equipment, including long pants, long sleeves, and the proper rubber gloves, and eye protection. First and foremost, we need to check and make sure that the cylinder that we're filling, or that the customer has dropped off for us to fill, is safe to be filled. And there's a couple things that we need to go through as we do that. First and foremost is the certification of the cylinder. If you check the cylinder, it will have a stamp on the collar or a sticker on the face of the tank that tells us when the tank was last certified. Certification takes place 12 years after the date of manufacture and after the recertification date, the sticker, every five years thereafter. At that point, after you've determined that it's in date, our cylinder that we're working with today was stamped in 15, we're now going to inspect the cylinder for any defects, such as corrosion, dents, or pitting from corrosion. It's also imperative that you also look at the bottom of the tank, checking the foot ring, the welds, making sure that they're intact, and looking at the head of the tank on the bottom to see if there's any pitting from the corrosion that we discussed. We're also going to check for leaks. We're looking for trailing of oil, which would uh, refer to a liquid leak, or audibly testing, do we hear something leaking on the tank? Once you've determined that all those safety requirements have been met, we should be able to proceed forward now to fill this tank. First, you have to determine what size cylinder you're going to fill. We already said we're working with 20 pounders, but we'll go through the entire process of determining what size tank you're working with. First and foremost number that we want to look for on the tank is stamped with a WC and a number thereafter. The WC stands for water capacity of the tank that you're filling, and the numbers following that will give you the weight in water capacity. This tank is WC48. At that point, you can go to your cylinder filling capacity chart, locate the number on the chart closest to the number stamped on the tank. This one is 48. Our closest number on the chart is 47.8. That tells us 20 pounds of propane. Thus, that's how they come up with the 20 pound cylinder. The next number that we have to come up with is the tear weight, the TW number stamped on the tank, 20.2 in this case. Always remember that tear weight plus the cylinder size always equals a properly filled cylinder. So in this case, if our tear weight is 20.2, we know that it's a 20 pound cylinder, add those two numbers together, gives us 40.2 pounds. Once we've determined this, we can now move to the scale. The slide scale is equipped to go from 0 to 100 pounds, and in our case, we said 40.2 pounds, so we'll get it as close to that 40 or just over, turning the thumb turn on the slide to make sure during the filling procedure that this, the weight does not move or jiggle or vibrate one way or the other. After that's been determined, tightened down, now we can go ahead and get our hose out. Now, in our case, you also have to take into the account the weight of the hose and the valving assembly that you've just hooked onto the tank. So now your weight is going to be off slightly. We've already predetermined our hose at this location. The weight of it on the cylinder is about two and a half pounds. So we need to increase our slide weight by approximately two and a half pounds. Now at this point, we're all hooked up, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and start our pump. 
The belly valve has already been opened on the outside of the facility. We'll let the pump wind up. And we can go ahead and open that valve to the hole. between these two valves. So as we disconnect, we do it very slowly, making sure our head is out of the way and audibly hear that gas exit between those two valves. After that's done, we can hang our hose back in our hangers and make sure that we cap the tank as it leaves our facility. This ensures that we're not getting dust, rain, ice, different things inside that nozzle for the customer when he gets to his facility. At this point, the next thing that you have to make sure that you're doing is as you pass that cylinder off to the, to the customer that's come to your facility, is to make sure that the cylinder is hauled in the furthest most part of the vehicle in an upright position and stable. Make sure there's a strap hooking the tank up in the upright position so it can't tip over. When done, you need to make sure that you're securing your dock facility, making sure that the safety valve is shut off outside, the belly valve, and also make sure all doors and gates are secure. Thank you very much for your time.